Hello everyone, Fanta here, and you are watching Fantavision. Today we are discussing GameStop again, but from a different kind of view. Now, we're not going to be ranting about how their customer service is terrible, or about how they upsell, upsell you all the time, or how they just completely don't know how to sell games, even though it's a video game store. No, we're not doing any of that, and I'm not doing the rant that a lot of people want me to do yet, which is people want me to rant about the trade-in values. I'll do that next week. This week, I want to discuss something that a YouTuber brought up that I do trust, but I haven't seen any articles on it, so it's kind of weird. But uh, Alpha Investments, who is a Magic the Gathering YouTuber, discussed the supposed talks between GameStop and Wizards of the Coast. Now, if you don't know who Wizards of the Coast is, those are the people that make Magic the Gathering, and they're owned by Hasbro. Now, GameStop has been selling a lot of toys lately, so I could kind of see why they might be talking. Now, what they were talking about is really interesting, because, as you know, they already sell Magic the Gathering cards at GameStop. Or you don't know, because you don't go into GameStop, because you watch my videos, and you're like, why would I go in there? So, they already sell the Magic cards, so what have they been talking about? They've been talking about making GameStop a tournament store. Now... This is interesting for a lot of different reasons, because I, I don't like it, but it also does have its positives if you look at it a certain way. So let's start with the negatives first. Let's get that out of the way. The negatives are it's GameStop. I don't trust them to run it correctly. I don't like their customer service. I don't like their locations. They're tiny, actually. I, I don't even know how they would run a tournament in most of their locations. Even the one I worked at, which was decently sized for GameStop, has no space for tables. I don't, I don't see how these talks could have happened. Maybe there's bigger stores in other states. They could make it a specialized thing at certain stores. But this is also terrible for local game stores. I mean... Card shops, brick and mortar card shops, already have to deal with a lot, and they're battling to make a profit. And if GameStop is now a competitor, and they can have tournaments, these stores are screwed. I, I had a local store close, so I have to drive like 30 minutes if I want to go to a Magic the Gathering store. And most of the time, I just don't have time. I mean, occasionally I'll go to like a pre-release event, but... Most of the time, it's just so out of my way, I don't want to go. So, if you're giving more competition to these stores that are already hurting, you're hurting the people that are trying to sell your product for you. Like, sure, yeah, Walmart, Target, Be or not Best Buy, actually Best Buy might, they sell Pokemon cards now. But, Walmart, Target, I mean, those, those people, they're not going to help you either. They're not the same as a local game brick and mortar store. Your local card shop is going to sell singles. They're going to teach people the game. They're going to get more people into the game because they're going to have people bring their friends to the introductory nights, bring their friends to the pre-releases. I mean, card shops are how card games thrive. It's why Magic the Gathering does so well. I mean, sure, most of the time, like I said, I don't go there very often, but when I do, the place is packed. And I've brought my friends along. I've gotten other people into Magic, and that's because of these events that I've gone to. They weren't entirely convinced, and we played a couple games, like, yeah, this is pretty fun. But then after they had the experience of going to a pre-release, opening up the six packs, making a deck, and beating people when they barely even knew how to play the game... And they were like, wow, this is so much fun. I can't believe how many people just beat. I had to even ask them what this card did. And I still won. And that's because my friends, I mean, they were learning the strategy as they went along. And as they built the deck, they, they learned what the certain cards do. And it's just a ton of fun. So this really fun card game, I mean, it's been struggling a little bit lately. But that's not because of you know, GameStop or Walmart, or anything like that, it's been struggling because their card stock is just garbage, and the cards, I don't know if I have an example, these are all older cards, the older cards were fine, I don't know if you can notice, but it does not, it's not warping at all, like a little bit, but that's just because I've been 
treating it poorly. But a lot of the newer cards will just warp like nobody's business. Okay, this isn't a sleeve, so it's not. I don't have any examples, but they'll curl because they're using a cheaper quality. So because of that, a lot of people are hearing about it from other YouTubers, and it's just spreading like wildfire. That quality control is crap. Now, I know Hasbro's trying to make more money. They're trying to make up for the lost players by talking to GameStop, selling the Masters boxes, which is like the specialty boxes, which is normally only at card stores, and those are, those are now selling at Walmart. And that, again, gives people less reason to go to the card shop which is not growing the game anymore. So, I get the convenience, I get that. I get the, the fact that there's so many GameStop stores out there, but they need to focus on getting their quality control back in how it used to be. Because, I mean, I've got these really old cards. I mean, look at this. It's like almost perfect, and I just have it sitting on my desk. And you can feel the card just feels different. You look at it, the gloss is different. It just, it feels thicker, you know? But I don't know what they're doing. This is more of a, a Wizards of the Coast rant now, but I wanted to talk about what would it look like now? Let's, let's talk about what would it look like if this did happen. Now, let's say GameStop does start selling singles of Magic the Gathering. Would this be a bad thing? Now, I don't know, because a lot of people thought that it would be a bad thing once they started selling retro games, but I actually saw the opposite kind of effect happen. They sold a lot of retro games for actually decent prices, because eBay and all the people and the collectors and the number of collectors going up caused the prices just go haywire. I mean, everything was just skyrocketing. But then GameStop came in, and they kind of leveled out some of the prices. Like, Eternal Darkness, for example, it was going for like 30 to 40 on eBay for the longest time. And then GameStop came back and started... Freaking... GameStop came back and started selling retro games again. And they were selling that game for 20 bucks. So because they, they have that baseline of 20 bucks, the rest of the market's going to go, Oh, well, shit. I mean, people could just go buy it at GameStop. They're not going to buy it in my eBay listing. I better drop the price. So a lot of games in the retro market were dropping in price. That's, in my opinion, a good thing. Even as a collector, I like the fact that more people have access to those games. Now, do they price some games that just like ridiculously? Of course they do because they're GameStop, but a lot of the games they were priced actually pretty decently. They weren't pricing it like a flea market would, which I don't know if you know is usually terrible. So, a lot of that was a good thing. So I'm wondering if maybe, I don't think it's going to happen, but if they did start selling Magic singles, they could underprice a lot of things and completely change the market. Because right now the market ebbs and flows, and I, I'm try I cannot predict what it's going to do. It usually goes on uh, card demand, popularity, stuff like that. Like, I have a Scarab God card. When I opened that card in a booster pack, I was like, oh, neat, an $8 card. But as it became more popular in Standard, which is when uh, you're playing at, like, Friday Night Magic, which is where you're playing, like, in the last, I think it's five blocks? I don't know. I don't play Standard. But when people are playing in that, more people need that card for their deck, especially because a standard deck usually has multiples of the same card in it. So people were running like three to four Scarab Gods. It was in huge demand. So it went from an $8 card, and I think the peak was at like $42. Crazy. Um, now it's around like 30, 32 range. But I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, they're going to have more supply with the more GameStops, because there may be a bunch of card stores out there, but if you've done any Magic the Gathering, like, card shopping, you'll see that the prices are just so different everywhere you look. I think the best place that at least I've bought cards at is TCG Player, um, but not even there is always the perfect place to buy cards. It's it's crazy. There's There's all these different prices everywhere, and because of how many GameStops there are, I think they'd be able to regulate the prices on these cards. I think they'd be able to set the standard. Now, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. 
Like I said, some games were undervalued. That would be great. That'd be great for standard people that play that. That'd be great for people that play the older formats, people that play Commander. But it could also be a really bad thing for all those people because once again, the retro market, they do have some games that are priced too high. But I don't know, from what I've seen, most games are priced either at market value or below. And with the constant deals and discounts that GameStop does, they'd be doing those same kind of deals and discounts on those cards, which could affect the market value, especially if the regularity of those discounts is just as much it is as it is right now with the retro games. I'm constantly seeing sales on retro games for like 40% off. So if they did that for cards, I think that would really shake up the market. Now, I know this is a video that doesn't apply to most of the people that watch these videos, but I don't know. I, I just thought it was an interesting look at a company that I yell at all the time. And I don't know, it'd be interesting. You'd wonder if GameStop would start selling boxes at competitive prices. Because right now, if you look at a box of Magic cards, I think they sell it for the MSRP, which is like 100, 110, something like that. Whereas I constantly, if I ever buy a box, which is very rare, I get it on eBay for like 85 bucks. Now, I could see GameStop doing sales on that too. I mean, GameStop at one point actually clearanced out a lot of their old packs, which would be even more amazing if they had more packs in stock, for 99 cents each. I unfortunately missed this because I heard about it too late, and uh, I don't live in a huge city, so they don't have very many packs. So even if I were to try to get one, it'd be like one or two packs. But I, I don't know. There's, there's, a, there's a lot more negatives and positives to GameStop doing this. But I just don't see GameStop doing it. I mean, even the pictures of the stores that I usually have in my screenshots, my thumbnails, my monitor, my examples. They're always these tiny stores because GameStop is usually just a hole in the wall. It's this tiny little store that you're just cramped with all the employees, the other customers, and they have so much other shit in there because they just sell a bunch of toys, backpacks, t-shirts, those stupid Funko Pop figures. There's no room for them to sell singles at all. There's no room for them to set up tables, even if they moved all of the shelves and everything out of the way and cleared it out completely, there'd be room at my local one for like two tables. Maybe that one over there, like three or four. I just don't see it happening. So if these talks, these rumored talks, like I said, came from an Alpha Investments, I believe the guy. He's a lot of insider informants. He knows a lot of people that work for Magic or he knows people that know people that work for Magic. And... It's just an interesting thought. I was just kind of inspired to make a video after you did that because I really wanted to kind of analyze what would that be like? And I don't know. I, I think because of how few stores could actually do it, I don't think it would negatively affect trading card stores. The only way I think it would kill trading card stores is if they did, in fact underprice their cards and do constant sales because I don't buy my cards at a brick and mortar store. I, I know I'm part of the problem, but when I build my deck online or I build the, the pack of cards that I want to buy online and I look at the price and then I look at the price compared to what they're selling it in store, I can't, I can't afford to buy that deck at the brick and mortar store because it's usually like 40 30 to 40% more expensive than online. And online, I can do a lot more shopping a lot quicker. And they have a lot more guarantee. I guess they got guarantees at the store, but they ship it to my house. I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to drive a half an hour. And I don't have to call them up and say, hey, do you have this card? It's just online. So, I don't know. It was just something I was thinking about, something I wanted to talk about. Sorry if this topic didn't interest you. I'm sure I'll do a video game topic either on Friday or Saturday. Friday, we will be doing more streams of Banjo-Kazooie. Um, 
we're gonna attempt to beat the game. I mean, the last level's a pain in the ass. We might just play something else. Uh, we'd probably play, probably play some Crash Bandicoot because I have the Crash Trilogy. I just haven't played it yet. So I'm looking forward to playing that. Come hang out with us. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Leave a like down below, or leave a like down below. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed it. Comment down below. Uh, if you play Magic, you know, let me know what kind of deck you play. Or what you think if, uh, what would happen if GameStop did start becoming a trading card store. I mean, they're not doing so great selling games. It's, it's apparent when you walk into one of those stores. Toys everywhere. Anyway. As always, guys, and my 11% female audience, have a fantastic day. See you guys. By the way, for those still watching, today I'm drinking Mother Earth Brewing Co. And it's called the Cali Creamin Vanilla Cream Ale. It's really good. It doesn't have too much vanilla flavor. It's more of like a hint. It's just a really smooth beer. I like it a lot. It's good. It's good. I know it's like the most hipster sounding name for a beer. And I'm wearing like the most hipster looking glasses ever. It's just, it's delicious. You know, it's really good. But I can't buy them here. They're only in California. So like I have to have my dad like pick up a couple cases while he's there. But uh, yeah. Magic. Magic.